I got some great feedback on my advanced combinatorics video. So following on from that, I'm doing an advanced work rate video. Now, if you haven't seen my standard work rate video, I urge you to check it out. You can go to my channel and search work rate because that lays the foundation for the technique we're using here. If you don't know how to do work rates at all, yes, this video will help, but it might be a little bit intimidating with a level of difficulty. So instead, I recommend looking at that earlier video first and then checking out this video. Mind you, if you pay close attention, you probably could learn it all just from this video. The good news is we're gonna apply the same technique no matter how hard the question gets. And these questions will get significantly hard. I haven't gone easy on you guys. I've picked out some of the hardest questions I could find. The first question I made up myself, but the other two come from GMAT Club and I've just made them a bit harder by changing the numbers. And what I've done as a little reminder, at the bottom I've explained the three principles that we're gonna follow for every single question and that I want you to follow for all the classical work rate questions. And we'll go through that in a second. Again, one final warning, this is an advanced work rate video. So really this video is designed mainly for those people pushing for a 165 to 170 in the GRE and a 700 to 800 in the GMAT. But without further ado, what are the principles? And let's get to the question. First, the principles. For any work rate question like this, your goal is to find the time for one job and to write it down clearly. They might try to trick you, as you'll see in a second in this question, by giving you the time for half a job or three jobs or whatever. But we need to write down the time it takes to do one job and write that down clearly. Next, you always need to do the reciprocal of the time to find the rate of that person. I explained why in the earlier video, but for now, I'm just gonna assume you know that. If they have given you the time or you've worked out the time for one job, we do the reciprocal to find the rate for that person. So you do that for each of the individuals involved. Always the same few steps, by the way. Next, we're gonna add those rates to find the combined rate. One quick exception, if you get a question where like a tap is pouring into a tanker and a plug is pouring out, you would take away the plug's rate because the plug is obviously taking water away. But nine times out of 10, you would add the rates because two people or objects or whatever are working together. So we add those two rates to find the combined rate. Finally, as we said in the second point, as time and rates are reciprocals of one another, once we've found the combined rate, we can do the reciprocal to find the combined time. And that's usually the answer to the question. Now, the way they make these things hard is by just varying what they're asking for and varying which unknown they give you in that process. But it's always the same process. That's what I'm really trying to emphasize here. But let's show off this process with this question. Anna can complete half a task in four minutes. Sumayara can complete four of these tasks in 16 minutes. Working together, how long would Anna and Sumayara take to complete five such tasks? Step one, find the time for one job. If Anna can complete half a task in four minutes, she can complete one full task in eight minutes. Times both sides by two, half a task takes four minutes, one task takes eight minutes. Notice we wanted to find one task, not one minute. We need to find how long she takes for one job, or in this case, one task, or whatever the question is, one widget, one object, whatever, one job. Let's do Sumayara. She can complete four tasks in 16 minutes. Therefore, what do we do? Divide by four, she can complete one task in four minutes. What do we do now? We write down clearly what each person's rate is. How do we find the rate? We do the reciprocal of the time. If Anna takes eight minutes for one task, her rate is one over eight. Now, usually I don't bother with the units, but if you're interested, the units would be one over eight tasks per minute. I don't really care about that too much. So Mayara is one quarter, that's her rate. The time was four minutes, 
So the rate is the reciprocal of 4, which is 1 over 4. Now we have both of their rates. They're working together, so we add the two rates. 1 over 8 plus 1 over 4. That equals, and I do want you to write this down, it equals the combined rate. Don't just write the calculation, just leave it there, label it. You'll see why that's helpful in this question and future questions. We'll now add those fractions, and I do assume you know how to add fractions quickly. The 1 over 4 will become 2 over 8, and adding those together, we get 3 over 8. So their combined rate is 3 over 8. If you want the units, and again, it doesn't really matter, it's 3 eighths of a task per minute. Now, what did we say to do with combined rate? Rates and times are reciprocals of one another. So the reciprocal of 3 over 8, which is 8 over 3, will be their combined time. Remember, time and rate are reciprocals of one another for work rate. So if their combined rate is 3 over 8, their combined time is 8 over 3. What does that mean? They take 8 over 3 minutes to do the job together. Out of interest, 8 over 3, what is that? 2 and 2 thirds. So 2 minutes and 40 seconds would be how long they take for one task, which makes sense. One person does it in four minutes, the other person does it in eight. Together they take yeah, two and a half minutes approximately. But notice that's not the answer because the question, and this is what they'll do at the 165 plus level or the 700 plus level in the GMAT, they'll change even what we're looking for. We're not looking anymore for one task. The question was asking about five tasks. So if this is the time, 8 over 3 for one task, we times that by 5 to get the time for five tasks. That would be 40 over 3, and that's usually how they'll write the answer. 40 over 3 minutes. And usually the answer will be written like that in minutes, 40 over 3, because the question was in minutes. But of course, if they did want the answer in seconds, we would times that by 60, and that would become, I think, 800 seconds. But either way, that doesn't really interest me. What interests me is teaching you this beautiful method where we found the combined rate and therefore the combined time. And we simply multiplied that by five because it wasn't one task, it was five tasks. This is a perfect exemplar of the method that we're going to use for the following two questions, which are progressively harder. Okay, let's get on to the next one. If you're feeling really brave, <laughs> you can try these questions on your own before I explain them. They can be done using this method, but each of the following two questions are slightly more advanced than the last and contain things that may make it still a little bit hard even if you know the method. We're pushing now towards the 170 and 800 level questions. But if you feel confident, you can pause the video and try the questions yourself. I will reassure you it is the same method though. So let's do this question. Working alone at their respective constant rates, Joy, Dipti, and Niha can finish a certain work in three, four, and six hours, respectively. If all three work together to finish the work, what fraction of the work will be done by Dipti? Okay, the start is just the same as we've seen before. We write out clearly that Joy, in this case, takes three hours to do the job, and therefore Joy's rate is one over three. Dipti takes four hours, so her rate is one over four. So far, so good. Niha takes six hours. So her rate is one over six. All perfect, all lovely. Next, they're working together. So we add those rates. Adding these rates, one over three plus one over four plus one over six equals, you get a common denominator of 12, and that would be nine over 12, which equals three quarters. So that's their combined rate. And if the question was asking how long would they take working together, we would simply flip that to get their combined time of 4 over 3. However, you might have noticed this question wasn't actually asking how long do they take all working together. It was asking what fraction of this combined work will be done by Dipti. And I'm here to say that phrasing of the question is much easier than it looks. They're just asking what fraction of this combined work rate, this combined achievement, is Dipti's. So all we do 
is Dipti's rate, 1 over 4, divided by the combined rate of 3 over 4. That's Dipti as a fraction of the combined group. That will tell us the fraction of the entire work, the entire combined rate, that Dipti's rate is. She's 1 quarter, their combined rate is 3 quarters, so her work rate as a fraction of the total work rate, if you divide those two fractions, you get 1 over 3. So she does a third of the overall work, and that's the answer to the question. You'll probably notice that we didn't even need the combined time. That wasn't even what they were asking. They were simply asking for Dipti as a fraction of the combined total. So we did Dipti's rate as a fraction of the combined rate. If you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. A quarter multiplied by 4 over 3. Fours cancel, you get 1 over 3. So that is the answer. But did you see the core method was exactly the same as in the previous question? So time for one final, again, difficult example to really hammer home this technique. Don't stress too much if you slip up. These really are the hardest kind of questions you can get. What about this one? Again, pause the video if you want to try it. Otherwise, I will just explain how to do it. Joel and Vivek can produce one widget in three hours working together at their respective constant rates. If Joel's speed doubled, Joel and Vivek could produce one widget in two hours working together at their respective rates. How many hours does it currently take Joel to produce one widget on his own? So let's follow our exact same method. We're just going to be really careful. Joel, how long does he take? What's his time? We don't know. Oh dear. So we write J hours. And if he takes J hours, his rate is simply 1 over j. Vivek, we don't know how long he took, so we're not scared, we're just going to invent a letter. V hours, so his rate is 1 over v. So it seems like so far there's a lot of things we don't know, but what do we know in that first sentence about Joel and Vivek working together? What do we know? We know that they take three hours working together. That's called their combined time. So what can you tell me watching this video about Joel and Vivek if their combined time is three hours? Can you tell me something else? If their time working together, their combined time is three hours. Their combined rate is one over three. Remember time and rate are reciprocals of one another. Did you spot that? Well, their combined rate is 1 over 3 because that's the reciprocal of their combined time, which we were told was 3 hours. So therefore, Joel's rate, 1 over J, plus Vivek's rate, 1 over V, must equal their combined rate of 1 over 3. So we have one equation with Joel and Vivek. Now, what about creating this next equation? If Joel's speed doubled, Joel and Vivek could produce one widget in two hours working together. Now the first thing you're probably going to spot is that their combined time is now two hours, not three hours. Therefore their combined rate is one over two, not one over three. But how do we deal with this thing about Joel's speed being doubled? What does that one over j become if we're doubling it, if we're doubling his rate? It would be 2 over j. If Joel's speed were doubled, we just literally multiply that fraction by 2. His rate is not 1 over j anymore, it's 2 over j. You might have thought it's 1 over 2j, but that's actually halving the rate. If you times that fraction by 2, because that fraction is his rate, 1 over j is his rate, you get 2 over j. So 2 over j, which is Joel's new speed, his new rate, plus Vivek's rate, 1 over V, equals their new combined rate of 1 over 2. So there we have our second equation. Now at this point, many students watching this will throw their hands up and go, oh no, Philip, 
It's going to be a long, complicated, simultaneous equation, right? To finish this off, to find Joel. But notice something. Those equations look nice and similar, don't they? Which is perfect for my favourite method, the one you all love, elimination. We can simply eliminate the 1 over v's because they're identical in the first equation at the top there and the second equation at the bottom. What I would do is simply take away the top equation, 1 over j plus 1 over v equals 1 over 3, from the bottom equation. And the 1 over v's will cancel out. Doing the second equation, take away the first equation, 2 over j minus 1 over j equals 1 over j. The 1 over v's cancel out, and a half minus a third is 1 sixth, I believe. So 1 over j equals 1 over 6, and therefore j equals 6. And that's the answer to the question. Because j, remember at the beginning, we defined as the number of hours that Joel takes to produce one widget. So that's the answer to the question. By the way, if they were asking for v, of course we'd put the 6 back into one of those equations and find out v. But we didn't need to, we've already got the answer, j is 6. But did you notice what was in common between all three questions? It was always the same method. We wrote down the time, whether that was a number or a letter. We did the reciprocal to find the rate. We added the rates. Sometimes we had to add fractions. Sometimes we had to create an equation where we knew the ending, but we didn't know one of the ingredients. And whenever they gave us a time, we did the reciprocal to find the combined rate. If we worked out the combined rate, we did the reciprocal to find the combined time. It was always the same method. Just slight, tiny variations in each question. Like here, the speed was doubled, so we doubled his rate. Or in the last question, we needed to find a fraction. So we did dipped his rate as a fraction of the combined rate. But those are just tiny variations. The method was the same. And if you enjoyed that method, like that method, please do leave a like, leave a comment. I read almost all of them, and I will see you in the next video.